I know this is a bit of a different start to videos than what we normally do. We're here in the Trophy Lodge, and as I'm kind of walking around today, I'm just seeing a couple of different things that I'd like to potentially try to improve, and I'm not even sure what to go after. So what I've decided to do is basically hop back to the main menu and go into multiplayer, and we might be switching maps multiple times. I'll try to hopefully keep it coherent as we go along. But yeah, I just thought we'd just kind of go for a hunt today and not get too bogged down in chasing one particular species. I ended up choosing Yukon to start on here today, and it's really for this particular reason. I've just, the last couple of days, really been wanting to get that basically last diamond moves for the Trophy Lodge to go opposite another diamond that we have and really complete that room. And I was considering a bunch of different maps. We were on Yukon recently, we were on Layton recently. Medved's a tough one to hunt moose on. And that was kind of the biggest reason that we ended up kind of going for this hunt where we're gonna end up switching maps and they may not all be mapped that have moose, but I wanted to start here. I wanted to give it a good shot and we'll see where we end up. But these lakes in the far north on Yukon may be better than the wetlands in at least some maps. I mean, there can be a ton of bulls up in this area, and that's the one kind of drawback sometimes when there are wolves around, you kind of end up with the, the moose spooking and not getting to see them all. But in this case, we we're all good for our level four. And while he may be about as small as they can get to be in the max weight estimate, about two kg above the 545 mark, it is a nice 213 gold with a hard shot from that seven mil to start with. And, Bit of a weird loadout as well to kind of go over. We have the 7mm Empress, just because I like the gun. We have the Mosin, just to switch it up entirely. And we have the 22 h just to, again, kind of have something that we don't carry as often as some of the other weapons. Well, go figure. In a very different area of the map, we have a very familiar sight in a moose that's, I'm pretty sure, the exact same rack. Now, due to our different loadout today, we're not able to just simply fire the 22 and get him to go alert and give us a shot. And I'm guessing it was due to our fast travel to the outpost back there that he actually was just running to his zone, but luckily it wasn't all that far away. And just for the heck of it, I thought we'd attempt a next shot and try to drop him that way. And I will say there, there's a fair chance that we got him uh, in the skull and lost the gold, but I wanted to try something a little bit different and kind of take advantage of the fact that the 7 mil does have pretty solid accuracy. So we'll go and grab that. We're starting to kind of tick closer to the end of moose drink time, unfortunately. But, you know, this is an area that I don't hunt for moose that often. I, I tend to mostly go after a grizzly bear and stuff like that. So I'll be intrigued to see what we run into as we have the last little bit of moose drink time remaining. As for this guy, he is a gold. We managed to keep that shot just above the skull and get into the neck there. So 216, a little bit bigger in terms of weight. I actually forget the score of the last, and actually the in-game time was just changed to 830. So we may go and look for caribou a little bit. Uh, that is now like before move strength time. But actually, I like to hang around on maps when the time has changed because what you'll often get is animals all of a sudden have to switch their zone and, and go to somewhere else. And you might run into animals, run into tracks that otherwise you wouldn't see. You are kidding me. I cannot believe that. So right back here is a max weight boost track. We're gonna move real slow. I saw over through there, cause he's feeding right now, just this big paddle and I thought maybe it would be decent, but I think we're far enough away to get up and pick up this track. I was coming down here, like I said, kind of to look for caribou in an area that I don't often go to. And what do you know, that is at least one of the things I was hoping to actually lay eyes on. And of course, we've got the 7mm Empress. The wind is not that good. And I think for the sake of trying to be safe here, we're essentially going to wait on him to lift his head and as much as I love to attempt drop shots, we're probably gonna try to make a safe uh, lung shot. Now, what we probably can do is kind of move around and alert him. 
Because the thing about really any feeding animal, but definitely moose, is that they don't lift their head all that often, and actually we're just not close enough to get his attention, it would seem. So it's going to be a waiting game, but whenever he lifts his head, we'll be ready. There we go. We're just going to slot it right into the crease behind the shoulder. It is likely to be single lung and nothing else. And of course, using an underpowered weapon such as the 7mm, he is going to run for probably quite some time. But the important part is, with an underpowered caliber at a less than ideal angle and a tough spot with bad wind and no way to get closer, I thought that was the most likely way to bring him down. But that's hunting pressure. That rack with an estimate up to 289, I give pretty decent odds of making it. It is a rack that we have a diamond of in the lodge, but we've got almost one of everything. That is one thing that I was thinking of. There's maybe only one diamond moose rack we don't have one or two, and odds weren't in our favor to get one of those ones, but if this guy makes it, I'll be so stoked. And it would have been so easy to pretty much just see that time change and leave because it wasn't the ideal time for one of our target species, but so quickly staying paid off. And let's not uh, get too ahead of ourselves. He is a diamond at 278. That's just insane. I mean, you know, we spent about an hour hunting moose drink time in what I tend to consider some of the better spots. I mentioned that lake in the far north as being one that often, you know, has a lot of moose. And here we are in a place that I would really not often go after them with a diamond and a cool looking rack with those big brow tines. I don't know if we have that particular set of brow tines. It'll be interesting to compare when we get back to the trophy lodge, but that is going to complete that one room that I've been talking about. Funny to see a 375 come up for a diamond moose in the chat, but I wanted to look at the tracking distance and I totally forgot to do that. So we'll have to take a look. Um, perhaps I can take a look at the screenshot before we uh, get going too far. But I mean, we can stay on Yukon and maybe look for like a, a rare grizzly bear or fox or something. We might as well, at least for a little while. But then we may go ahead and switch maps like I was talking about at the beginning. I know this is going to sound a little bit strange considering we just shot a diamond moose off that map, but it really started to feel rather empty and maybe it was, you know, the fact that we kind of got into moose drink time again and we were hunting areas that maybe were hunted by other people. I'm really not sure, but we managed to accomplish one of the major goals for this hunt anyway in getting the diamond moose and I wanted to switch maps, so I thought it was time to go ahead and do that. and. I'm not exactly sure why, but I thought Rohunga might be a good transition. Obviously, the true Axe Kudu are still fairly new, and there's a number of things that we'd like to have in the Trophy Lodge, at least off this map, that we don't currently have. But for the moment, we're going to go ahead and take a Gems Book with what I was hoping would be one of those random Spinal Cord shots that are definitely not Spinal Cord shots, but I think Double Lung is going to get the job done. And that actually was not that bad a track. A 289 gold actually single lung with a 7 mil. It brought a chem's bug down a lot quicker than I thought it would have, but it is just about 8 o'clock in this particular server, so we're probably going to kind of stay in the fields and see if we can find anything interesting for Kudu. This is truly incredible, and I'm not sure what we're about to find out when we spot this, but it's obviously an Albino Cape Buffalo, and it's a 7. Again, all, well, three now of the Albino Cape Buffalo that we've seen have been level sevens. I think we have one with this set of horns and one bigger than this. So actually, I'm not so sure it's exactly the same, but it'll be interesting to see what we can do with the 7mm Empress again. And in this case... We don't have a water barrier, but we do have to deal with the kind of barrier of the grass. We can either crawl in super close, or we can go for a longer shot. I think kind of scooting in closer is going to be a little safer, especially given the slightly underpowered nature of the 7 mil. So the way that we'll do this is we'll mark the location of that cave buffalo, and we'll just kind of crawl through the grass and hopefully get into range. 
Well, that might be a little problematic. Well, that's our guy right there. All right, we might be taking a slightly different approach than we planned. But I mean, if he's just gonna stand there and offer that heart shot, we'll take it with the seven mil every time. I was really hoping to maybe get a little bit closer with the way this worked out, but I've made that exact mistake before. I always think that that grass over there is the same as this stuff, because you can hide in this stuff. If you get uh, crouched down in here, like it fully uh, keeps you hidden, but then you get into this and you can just kind of tramp it down. But anyway, I don't think anybody cares to look at the uh, quality of the grass in this area. I would say the Albino Cave Buffalo Lane right here is a little more interesting and so crazy to me. We've had three albino males, all have been level sevens, all have been golds, two out of the three at the very least have been hard shots, and I want to tax that before we do anything else. 127.6, 43 meters away with the seven mil. That is insane. And you know, if this hunt is anything, it's a testament to the way that, you know, a lot of trophy animals are found in Call of the Wild and why I think getting kind of hung up on just going after one species can be such a negative. Right now, we're walking up to what is the kind of hotspot area for kudu. They rest up in there. There's a bunch of hunting pressure, so I don't know that we're going to see much of anything. But again, not really what we're after. We shot that diamond moose really after hunting for them in the times, which kind of had it better for, for caribou, so we started going after them. Here we are chasing kudu, and we got one of, if not the coolest possible rares off of Rahunga. I'm almost tempted to take that level two over there. I mean, just comparatively, that three might make gold. Everything else is kind of just not all that special, and we probably should have the collar that would definitely help our odds in case there's anything kind of hidden. But I think if we can make a shot on that level two, and actually what I want to do is go ahead and use the Mosin a bit today. Now this isn't necessarily one of the hunts where, you know, we bring a weird loadout and have to make sure we use it all. I just wanted to bring some different weapons. But the Mosin has always been very capable on Kudu. We could have had a second one there if we were a little faster. And it's actually nice to, to get to use it on them again. It used to be kind of the go-to weapon. I mean, we see just the amount that were in this area. I don't see any big ones. Not really that big a surprise considering the hunting pressure that was here. Uh, in all likelihood, it was checked not that long ago by whether it was the host or someone else in multiplayer. What just happened to our hunting pressure? I'm guessing it has something to do with that. Oh, we killed two? There's our, our little bronze. Point two below the silver mark. Where do we hit this one? Huh. I mean, again, <laughs> that displays how good the Mosin is on Kudu. That was entirely an accidental shot. Like, we were trying to hit a different one, and it just must have jumped straight into that bullet. Not going to complain. That definitely worked out. I've always got to check for lions just in case. And I mean, our odds of finding a rare female lion after shooting an albino cape buffalo in the same server would not be good. And in this case, just a level six, I think with no chance of gold. I want to say 46 is gold for them, but I wanted to kind of get something different to wrap up here. And after a little difficulty getting the crosshairs lined up, something we rarely do is take a lion with the seven mil. So, Nice way to kind of wrap up. It's been interesting to carry the different weapons. Unfortunately, uh, the way that it worked, minus the couple of shots at the Kudu there, the 7 mil was kind of the only gun that we got to use today. But considering the results, we have two new Trophy Lodge editions. I don't really have a problem with that. And I think, oddly enough, the room that the Diamond Moose was completing is one that's got an albino cape buffalo already in it. So we may end up redoing a bunch of the lodge here, or at least multiple uh, rooms more than we had intended, but that is a good problem to have. So, uh, gold was 44, we actually missed it by 0.1 there. Guess he definitely did have a chance of gold, but still didn't make it. And I think on that note, we're gonna go back to the trophy lodge and figure this out. On almost any other day, 
I would be more excited about the Albino Cape Buffalo. But this has been a work in progress for so long, and it's exactly what I hoped it would be. Like, my biggest issue with this particular room in the lodge for a long time has been, like, how empty this back wall is. You see the other walls. You've got the gun displays. You've got a ton of trophies. And then you kind of get back around to the back wall there. And there's not that much going on. So the size of the diamond moose antlers just kind of fills a lot of that empty space. I think it looks a whole lot better. And actually, we put our diamond elk from Friday's Twitch stream in here as well. We had the, the max score planes bison there. I wanted the elk here, but it wasn't going to work with the beams. So we kind of did the next best thing and switched them around. Then to go back to the albino cape buffalo, this is the coolest thing. I just, when we shot him and when I saw those horns, I thought it was the same set of horns as we had from our last seven, but it actually was not. He is our smallest at 127.6, but this was the other one, 133.6, and it's interesting, almost a year ago, February 23rd, 2021 was what would have been our second albino cape buffalo. Obviously, January 13th, uh, 2022 for the most recent. What was the date of the other one? April of 2020, so like, basically once a year, we get an albino cape. We're two weeks into 2022, and we've got our albino cape out of the way for the year. You know what will be interesting, though? We may see Drek, uh cape buffalo by the end of the year, and stuff like this is why I hope they score and look similar. Because I'd hate to get rid of these things. They look amazing. But to have three different sets of horns on three different gold uh, level 7 albino K buffalo. I mean, that just is incredible. I'm so pleased with the progress we're already making on this lodge in 2022. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video. So thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you next time.